Thanks for checking out this show review video. This is for season two of the show Nosferatu, which is on the Shutter streaming service when I'm doing this review. I had watched the first season on Shutter. It was originally on AMC channel, and then Shutter ended up getting it. They just got season two a few weeks ago, so I was excited to dig into that because I really did like season one. So I have a review for season one already on my channel. There's some back information on the show in that so I would tell you go to that because I'm not going to talk about as much on this one I'm just going to kind of talk about how I felt about season two so this is more for people who have already seen season one and are trying to make up their mind is season two worth it so there might there might be a few spoilers that come up so if you have not seen season one go watch my review for that because that is spoiler free um, and then you can make a decision on if you want to start it or not but this is mainly for the people who already watched season one which I will already say up front, I like season one more than season two. I'm sure that was the case for a lot of people because they actually lost a lot of viewers in season two, which is why it ended up getting canceled. But you can tell that they were hoping for another season when it came to the end of season two because it goes into something else that they could have gone with, which I didn't think is as interesting, but is okay. So I would have checked out a season three if it was going to happen, but I, I'm not sure I would have been as, enthousi as enthusiastic as I was going into season two. And that said, I felt like for the most part, probably the first half of season two, I was really digging. I was really into, they, they dug into more backstory for uh, some of the characters, which I thought was good. But then kind of when they got to like the halfway point, they started giving more backstory. And some of it felt like it was really repeating backstory that we kind of already got through interactions in season one and then it just started feeling like they were just really trying to waste time just trying to stretch the time out of these run times to a hit the you know hour mark for their their time on tv for uh including commercials so it's like 45 minutes ish and b trying to hit a episode amount which is 10 episodes and Whenever it starts to feel like that, that sucks. It feels like they take uh, a little amount of story and they just start to really, really stretch it out. And it really kind of felt like, not not in season one, because there's so much being introduced and so much new stuff, and it felt like they just had a lot to go through. But in season two, it just really starts like it starts to feel like they were planning for more seasons and hoping for more seasons, so they were saving stuff. So they were adding in a bunch of filler, especially, like I said, like once we hit the halfway mark, uh, between the halfway mark till the end, there's a lot of filler. It feels like it starts to go really slow. It drags from time to time. There's still good stuff that happens, and I'm glad that I watched it. And I would recommend that if you've seen season one, you should probably see season two just to see where they end it because um, it's it's worth it. It's worth it. I'm, it. It wasn't my favorite how they ended it. Uh, especially because after it feels like the story is over, they then kind of do like a certain amount of time later after the events. Uh, and that's fine, but for what they had to say at that point, they put too much too much of too much time was devoted to that. They should have cut that time back in my opinion. but you know, that's all the off the top of my head I'm gonna go for my notes now, but, as we know, this is based off a Joe Hill book, which I have not yet read, so I don't know how much of the story from seasons one and two is from the book, how much is added, how much isn't there, because there may be extra story that they were saving for more episode or for more seasons. Um, so I do want to read the book at some point. I've heard good things. A buddy of mine has read it and said it's really good. Um, yeah, so this actually just got canceled back in August. The show, so it's it's freshly canceled basically. Uh, their view, their ratings dropped by half, apparently. So it's no big surprise when something like that happens. I mean, the, the station really has to drop it, which it kind of sucks, though, because this was a fresh story. It was an interesting story. It's a unique take on the whole vampire thing, and that's what I like most about it. So I like to support things that are interesting and unique like that. Meanwhile, they're still beating to death the zombie genre by continuing to have Walking Dead, and not just one Walking Dead. I think there's two. Are there three at this point? I don't even know. But the fact that they keep going with Walking Dead, and I just keep hearing from people, it's no good anymore, and it hasn't been good for seasons. Uh, it just makes me sad that they're still running that stuff, but something like this gets canceled. Even though I felt like it was starting to wane, they could have 
you know, brought it back. There's a jump forward in time in this in the very beginning that's actually a really good starting point. A bunch of things have happened, years have passed, uh, and it feels like a sequel in a sense that ends up showing the aftermath for Vic from the uh, Vic McQueen and other people from the ending of the events of season one. So I kind of do like that. It feels like it's it's kind of its own story, but it's a sequel. So I like how they did that jump forward because there's a lot that you could compare to the first one um, that gets echoed in the second one, but it, it's from a different viewpoint in a way. And I do enjoy that. Like in the first season, characters are complicated and very realistically thought uh, flawed. That's one of the things I really liked about season one, and that continues with season two. Um, yet you're able to kind of understand these people with, with how flawed they are because it's realistic, like I said. You know, people are complicated, and I love it when there's a show or a movie that fleshes out people as not just purely good or purely bad, but it's complicated and because that's real life. That's how it truly is, you know. Barely anyone is purely good or purely bad. Everyone's some version of gray area, and the show represents that pretty well. You get more of a backstory on Manx, on Charlie Man Manx, and how he came to be the way he is and who he is. That is some of the best backstory stuff, in my opinion, because that's missing from season one. So to have it in season two really, you know, helps flesh out the story more. It's great. Uh, and much like the story of Vic's family, that's complicated. Additionally, you learn more about Christmas Land because that gets kind of rolled in with learning more about Charlie Manx because obviously Christmas Land is his. Uh, the directing's really well done in this, much like in season one. There are a lot of interesting camera shots that they end up using for this. So once again, looks good. Cinematography, directing, acting for the most part is really good, except I still cannot stand the old man voice for Charlie Manx. <laughs> it is like cartoonish to the nth degree. It is annoying as hell. I hate it. Uh, it just like grates on my nerves whenever I hear it. Uh, there's a new character named Lou who shows up in this one. There are a few new characters, but there's a new character, uh, Lou, played by Jonathan Langdon. And I just wanted to call that out because I love his character of Lou in this. And I love the way he played that character. That's a great character. I wanted even more. He gets a good amount of screen time, but I wanted even more from that character because I liked him as much as I did. Uh, there's a quick cameo from Tom Savini. I know that could be like a surprise for people, but it's very quick. So I just wanted people to be alert on the lookout. There is a quick cameo from Tom Savini, and it's fun. There's an expansion of the world of creatives a little bit. They do that a little bit in season one, but they do it more in season two. And there's also kind of a question posed towards the end of like a, who else is out there? Who's a creative? Kind of opening that question to, we could do so many more seasons. Um, and they could have, you know. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff that actually ends up happening in this, unfortunately, that starts to feel too convenient for the writers. Uh, and that's what, around the halfway mark of the season. I hate that. That's that's when they're getting into the we're, we're wasting time type thing. Uh, and it seems like a lot of the convenient writing has to do with stretching things. So that really sucks. And it just, like I said, it starts to drag. Uh, it, it seem, at first, it, at one point, it seems like they start to ignore some of the rules they set up uh, regarding Manx and the Wraith in Season 1. And I was starting to really roll my eyes at that and be like, oh, this is just like the writers just being like, oh, I'm too lazy, this is convenient. Uh, but no, they actually don't ignore them, those rules. You just think they do for a little bit. So I, I like that they kind of led you to believe that, and then they're just like, ha-ha, no. So that's good. It seems the story may have been better told as a limited series. Because when writers and showrunners understand there could be more seasons, they stretch the material, and the show starts to suffer because of that. And that's probably why the ratings went down, because people felt that they were doing that, and nobody likes that. There's a theme in here of what happens to creative people who have demons they struggle to deal with. That's in the first season as well. Uh, and I was wondering if it's possible that this kind of comes from Joe Hill's experience growing up, because I know that at least The Shining, uh, Stephen King writing The Shining, which Joe Hill is Stephen King's son, 
Stephen King writing The Shining is a lot about himself and his alcohol abuse. He's been sober for a long time, like decades now. But um, he wrote The Shining as kind of like a reflection on his alcoholism and, and the issues that it had on his family. Um, so I'm wondering if part of what went into Nosferatu had to do with experience from, from Joe Hill. So I just found myself thinking about that during this. It's still dealing heavily with uh, trauma and what it does to a person later down the road, but it also introduces the worries of making the same mistakes that your parents do with your own kids and just in life and realizing that all the terrible things you went through because of the bad choices your parents made, you start to look at your life and you're like, is the same thing happening to me? Am I reliving basically what my parents lived through? And that works in this. And uh, yeah, so that's basically all I have to say about it. Once again, it's not the best, but it is still good enough. It's unfortunate that it really goes downhill and and gets really slow about halfway through. But at least the first half is still fun and exciting. I would just, you know, I would say the first season is really good. The first half of the second season is quite good. Then the last half is, yeah. But, you know. So anyway, make up your own decision on it. But I would be interested in hearing comments on people who have already seen season two or you're thinking about doing season two, what are your thoughts? Even about season one, that's fine too. Let's let's talk in the comments. Spoilers are fine in the comments, by the way. So do me a quick favor though, hit that subscribe button. Uh, that's your best way to repay me. If you like any videos I've ever done, this one or others or more, you know, all of them, that'd be great. Uh, because it does mean a lot to me when people actually subscribe. It, it helps motivate me to keep things going. Uh, truly it does. Uh, Cause it's like, you know, it's a validation. But anyway, if you do that, please hit the uh, notification bell. That way you know when I'm putting up more videos or when I'm doing any live streams or anything like that. Uh, but regardless, thanks for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.